Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. Well, I saw this easy pinwheel card that Dawn O, who's a Stampin' Up! rep, made on YouTube. And I have to say, she used the word easy in the title, and I have found it to be, frankly, very tricky. This is the only one I've gotten to work, and I'm not taking the belly band off of it because I don't think I can get it back together again. I Yeah, it's that painful. But I really, really want to try. Okay, this is try number five. I'm going to make it work this time. Anyway, here's how you start out. You start out with double-sided paper. You have to like both sides of the paper, and you'll want them to be fun together. You're going to want the the side that's on the inside of your paper um, that's going to be in the inner part underneath at this point. You're going to draw little marks at three inches on two side, um, two places on each side. So um, you're going to want, I lost my pen tool just for a second, you're going to want to have a mark this is since it's an eight inch square piece of paper you're going to want a three a mark at the three inch mark right there and then three inches from this side which is five inches on your ruler so you could have done it where you you measured three inch and then moved your ruler to this side and did three inches and then flip the ruler completely over to get the three inches on this side but it's just easier to say you know three inches from this side on the ruler is five inches so I hope that makes sense to you you're gonna score at three inches and five inches on your or not score make a little mark at three inches and five inches now I don't have that diagonal plate for my scoreboard and frankly I thought I did but I was going to try and do this without it anyway because I like to make sure that if there's a if there's a way to do things without a lot of tools, I I make sure that you know that my viewers can do things with minimal tools. Here's what you're going to do. Hopefully you can see this. Here's a mark right here and a mark right there. We're going to take our ruler and we're going to line up those two marks like that, and we're going to hold our ruler in place. And then we're going to take our score tool and we're going to do a nice deep score. You can do it two or three times. And you're going to move the ruler to the next set of score marks. And then you're going to hold your ruler down. And again, you're going to just kind of go over that score mark a few times. Then you're going to turn your paper and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to line up these two scores. You have little V's right um, in the center of each of your four sides. You're going to want to cut those four V's out. So you have your four V's cut out. Now, once you have that done, you are going to want to flip your paper over. So you had the side you didn't like down, and now it should be up, okay? So, well, the side you want for your inside. So our next part we're going to do is we're going to score with our scoring board. That last flip over is really important. Now what you're going to do is you're going to be at the one inch mark. You're only going to do one of these. Then you're going to turn it one turn and you're going to do at the one inch mark again one of those. You're going to turn it again one inch. One last turn one inch. I think that's all of our scoring. So now when you have those score marks, you'll have a groove from where you scored. You want to fold away from those 
those grooves. You want to fold back on them and then use your um, bone folder. So each one of them you're going to fold back on, on itself. Make sure you do a nice job of scoring it down. And there's this one. Fold it over. And then this is our last one. So then what you want to do is you want to fold back on our scores that we have left behind in the center. So we're going to fold behind, fold those back on themselves. And we're going to score these to make, or uh, use our bone folder on these to make sure these are nice and um, well, well burnished. That means you've used your bone folder on them and really got a good crease. So you're going to start at the bottom and you're going to go in a clockwise direction. So you're going to lay your bottom piece up, then the one next to it, then the one next to it, then this one has to catch on this piece and you're going to tuck it underneath and in. But you have to catch on that piece and make sure that you get that in there and then kind of wiggle it around to get it to be in there and flat. And there you have it. Sandy's 50th time, that's a lie, fifth time of doing it. That's what it's supposed to look like. I know, it's hard to believe. But anyway, let's decorate this bad boy. Whew, I never thought I was going to get that one done, honestly. <laughs> that's pretty pathetic. Okay, so I got some papers that I wanted to layer. And the inside paper, I just want to make sure this will fit. It should. My biggest paper is 4 and 1 eighth inch. Then this pa piece is four inches. Then this is three and three quarters. So that I had kind of a, that might be a lie. No, it's not. Okay, so let's um, do our stamping first. I like the idea of doing like a branch on the inside of this. Not anything spectacular. But I have this set from Stampin' Up! This really old called Stem Silhouettes. And I just thought having one of them in the background very light, I mean very light, would be nice. So I'm going to do it on my white piece of paper. And I'm using this Kiwi Kiss. It looked like it matched my um, paper, so I thought I would play with it. And I might just stamp off on it so that I don't have a very dark stamped image because I want to make sure. So I've got a piece of scrap paper that I played with with some um, sprays and I'm going to see how dark this ends up being. And it's not too horribly dark. Let's see what it ends up being if I stamp off, which means you stamp it once and then you stamp it a second time. And it's the second time, it's too light. Okay, we're going to go with, oh, I've got washi tape and everything else on this. I wanted something that I could kind of write over, you know, that it would be something that would just be there but not significant. So I'm just going to put a little, I'm only doing it on the edges because otherwise I'm taking up all my writing space. And we don't want to do that. I'm just going to put them on the edge like that and then I think I'm going to lower this one and just do it low like that and then I'm going to do the same on the other side just so we have you know a little bit of um, more I don't know a little bit more filled in okay made that up as I went now I'm going to use this stamp from another set by Stampin' Up! that's very old it's called Friend to Friend. I had the box, but now I don't know what to do with it. And it says, Count your life by smiles, not tears. Count your age by friends, not years. Happy birthday. And I'm going to do a really odd stamping job. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the two together. I'm going to use the same green ink 
I think I'll do a green on the outside and turquoise on the inside, or maybe I'll do both and see which one I like better, because I did get my turquoise ink out. These are the things I just don't know about. I'm just stamping it and holding it in place. Okay, Let's stamp it again on this one and see what, if we like one versus the other one. This is Memento Teal Zeal. I want to see if this one looks better than the other one did. You never know, right? So you might as well try them both. See which one you like the best. And you really want to hold these down and really hold it in place. You want the ink to transfer well, and the longer you hold it down there, the better, especially when you have a big block like this one. Oh, I like that color. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ink the happy birthday. And I'm going to put some paper above it. I'm going to put some scrap paper right above it. Oops, i got to turn it this way. I'm going to put my scrap paper right up there. As close to the top as possible. And then we're just going to stamp the happy birthday, and hopefully it's all on the same paper. What if this works? Are you going to be impressed? I think you should be. The odds I actually got it right. Oh, that's shocking, isn't it? I think you should be clapping right now. Okay, the f next thing I want to do is I want to see if I can punch out... Let me get this ink out of the way, because you know I'm going to end up with that all over me. I'm just going to use my paper trimmer to cut my sentiment out. I originally thought I might use dyes, but I think it, that this will be simpler in the end. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut it out with this. That'll be so much easier. And I'll just put the scissors for that little teeny tiny bit right there. So that's that piece. And then um, as far as, whoops. I thought I would put it on a piece of orange, and uh, the orange isn't bad. I'm just going to trim a little bit off the edge. Tape runner. sure. I was <coughs> going to put some brads on this, but the brads that I chose are a little bit... Hold on, i got to make sure. Oops, too far that way. And then I think I'll just use my paper trimmer and just trim the edges again and make it a little bit shorter. That looks better. And then, as I said, I did have some pieces that I wanted to, or some different um, brads that I wanted to put on here. And now that I'm looking at how big everything is, here's my brad collection that I was going to play with. And here's the ribbon I was going to use. Um, I don't know if these are going to be too big or not, but let's, let's glue down our papers and see what we think. I have this glimmer paper that I didn't really, I don't know, I had an issue with it. It was too glittery for what I was doing, and so I just figured I'd use the back of it with, that is not glittery. That was my plan anyway. And then my white paper is where I'd have to decide about the brads. What about if I just glue down a couple of these? Maybe I'll just glue one of those. I think I'm going to glue just one of those and not put any brads. I have these little white brads, but white on white isn't that exciting. We're going. We're just going with the one I can glue down. After 17 hours of making this card, 
I think somebody should give me like a prize for this because this card has been a nightmare. I don't know why. It's it's not like it's that hard to do. I just can't. I just kept screwing it up. I don't know why. I'm gonna use our glue dot. I have them right here, and I'm gonna use my scissors to just take one off like that, and then lay it on the back. Hopefully, lay it down flat because. That's the other problem I have is sometimes my glue dots attach to everything and I'm just going to put that like that. Oh, it's kind of cute. And then I can write everything in there and then let's glue this in the inside. Got a little flower in the way that I completely forgot about before I, I should put my flower on last, but you know how I do things. Okay, we're going to put this in the center of our little project. That looks good. Okay. Two, three, and then this is the one that I have to lift this one put this under like that. We have a little problem because of our um, flower that's right there, but it still I think looks okay. And then I did come up with a banner, which is just, you know, this, but I wanted to do something else with it. People often ask me how to use one of these punches when you're doing it on a really long strip like this one. I've already st uh, punched a lot of it, but what you have to do, do you see on this right here, do you see this diagram that's in silver? Hopefully, I can move it back just a little bit. You see that? What you need to do is you need to uh, put your um, punched piece right there, make sure it's up against the edge, and then you have to punch it like that. That's how you will punch the entire row. I found some ribbons that I thought I liked and I even thought because I do have this big piece of orange I thought what I could do is um, layer it in the center of my turquoise blue. So I have some fabric fuse that I'm going to use. I used it on some ribbon yesterday and I thought it worked really well, so I'm going to use it today. It's from Aileen's, in case you didn't know about this kind of glue. And I'm going to put it on my orange ribbon. The other thing, let's say you don't have that fabric fusion, you know what else you could use is that tear tape. That would work really well to put in place. You could use hot glue if you're brave. And of course, I'm not. I'm kind of a chicken. Okay, let's see if I can weave this through here and see what, how I want to do my weaving. Maybe through this slot and through here. There's my ribbon. Okay, let's see how this looks. Kind of nifty. There's my sentiment. I'm going to put that up on dimensionals. Ready? Okay, there's that. Then we're just going to wrap this around and then we're going to cut it off. I think I'm going to cut it off right there. I think that's short enough. under. Okay. That looks good. Now what I have to do is this is definitely a tear tape moment. 
as I was starting to tear tape this together, I realized I needed to line it. So I just took a scrap of white paper. This is about an inch and a quarter wide. So I made it a little bit less than an inch and a quarter. Just a little, I mean like just an eighth of an inch maybe littler than that. But it has to be lined because the tear tape is so sticky that it will it, it will adhere to this and you don't want that to happen. And um, if you have some tear tape that comes through this side, like on the outside, just run your uh, little embossing buddy or embossing tool. If you have one of these bottles, hold on, let me grab it. If you have one of these little bottles, you can just kind of just do this over the the little in holes and then it'll make sure it's not sticky anymore so you're just trying to make sure that you can avoid that if you use very very thin like an eighth of an inch tear tape you'd be better off but unfortunately mine was too wide and I ended up getting it so that you can you know so the sticky is there but that made it so much better and um, now my um, belly band goes on so much easier in the end, I think I'm comfortable making this card. I hope I gave you really clear instructions about the flipping it. You do have to flip the paper twice in the process. And I hope that you'll try it. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell one friend about me on social media. I really appreciate that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.